Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing today? Nice to see all your smiley faces. I told you we'd be back in about 24 hours, <laughs> and it's 24 hours, and we're back live. Yesterday, we had two shows, which was extraordinary. I don't know if you saw the show yesterday. We had uh, Nick Endicott Gibb. What an amazing story when he was on. He realized uh, when he found out who his biological father was that he found out Morris Gibb of the Bee Gees is his fi biological father. Could you imagine that? It was an amazing story. If you missed that episode, he was live from uh, Sussex, England, part of Cousins Gibb with his cousin Deborah, who's in Australia, and they have this fantastic musical group. And then, of course, we had that fantastic, uh, lovely chat episode yesterday as well. Hope you guys are doing well wherever you're watching. We know we have an international audience. Lovely viewers who are watching from around the world. Busy day for me. We literally just got in from a full day of television shoots and a couple of radio shows. We're headed to Boston for a TV shoot uh, early this week as well. Busy, busy time. Thanks for being with us, gang. We love all of you and really appreciate everybody here. Thanks for being with us. We're at the 650 mark, I think, or so of amazing episodes, bringing back that lost start of conversation and the warm conversational style. You can comment live in chat if you'd like to right now. We have an exclusive JMS chat room, and a lot of our viewers love to chat live with us. So the shows are live. However, if you watch this later on, this will be archived on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And if you would like to uh, watch this later, you can share the link and uh, enjoy it later as well, right here exclusively on our YouTube channel. But a lot of we see a lot of comments. Thanks for the comments already. Going to take a look at some of those gang, our lovely squad uh, that's commenting and saying hello to each other, which we love because it is like a big community here of great people that watch and support our entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series, The Gym Master Show Live. If you would like to uh, have the opportunity to comment live and say hello to our fellow viewers, our lovelies, or to us, feel free to do that. When you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, one of the exclusive things that happens is you have an opportunity to exclusively chat during the live shows with us and with our viewers in chat, which is exclusive for our fabulous uh, subscribers. And uh, if you don't want to chat, you can still subscribe anyway, because that counts you into the fold in our JMS Lovety family. And there's some cool things that happen when you subscribe as well. And don't forget to give this episode and all the episodes you enjoy a big thumbs up. There's a little thumbs up icon on our YouTube channel. Looks like this. <laughs> Just click on that and uh, it'll give you an opportunity to let us know you're enjoying what we're doing here every single day just for you on the Gym Master Show Live. And leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well. Again, hope you guys are doing well. If you, you know how it is, if you're not having a good day, so many of you write to me, you send tweets and Instagram messages, Facebook messages, you post it publicly that you come here uh, for entertainment, our poignant conversations, our great guests, but also it's a wonderful spot on the dial to get away from all the chaos and craziness of life. We always talk about having great entertainment, lots of levity, but we have poignant conversations and lots of beautiful moments with our viewers and our guests as well. Speaking of that, when I found out that I uh, had an opportunity to welcome these two folks to our show, Jeffrey Sitkov and Joanne Newgard, they are with Doors of Change. He's the founder and president. She's the program director for this extraordinary organization. Now, you guys know that I'm very big on philanthropy as well as uh, causes that really matter. This is extremely amazing what they do. And I think you're going to learn a lot and you're going to appreciate uh, the work that goes into everything that they do with Doors of Change. It's an extraordinary organization that really is combining the worlds of music, <laughs> which I think is fantastic, and the arts, and doing it in a way, believe it or not, and we're going to explain it to you, and I'll have them explain it even more succinctly. Uh, they're doing it in a way where it actually helps transform the lives of youth, uh, homeless youth, you know, because in the last year, homeless youth, well, that's increased considerably. However, you know, in the strange twist of fate, the virtual world that has sprung up out of the pandemic sort of uh, has given a rise to opportunities and the youth seeking help. The unique music and arts programs that Doors of Change, which is in um, 
California. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing that they're doing and offers homeless youth not only uh, wonderful ways to you know have their lives saved, but it's really taken them from hopeless situations to even college degrees. And there's an amazing concert that's coming up where the Grammy-nominated Three Dog Night, and of course you know them, right, has offered San Diego, California, a beautiful city, love San Diego, a special concert of hope for homeless youth benefiting Doors of Change. It's coming up on Thursday, June 30th, 2022. There'll be a VIP reception and so much more. It's going to happen at the Moonlight uh, Amphitheater in uh, Vista, California. And the organization itself, Doors of Change, they are headquartered in San Diego as well. Really fantastic to have them on the show because, you know, pandemic silver linings, finding a new virtual world for the nearly 3.5 million homeless youth across just the United States alone. I know that's a daunting figure. Just across the United States alone, that is the figure. Now you figure tie in the rest of the world. And again, the numbers are just daunting. So whatever we can do to help, it's my pleasure to have them here on the show. Join me, everybody. I see a lot of comments coming in already. That's so beautiful. Let's welcome Jeffrey and Joanne to the Gym Master Show live. Welcome, gang. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having us. You're very welcome. How are your day going? Uh, Monday, start of the week. Good? Busy? (laughs) Busy, busy, busy. You too uh, as well, Joanne? Absolutely, yeah. Monday's a, it's always great to start to the week off the right way. So this is a great way of ending our day here. So <laughs> That's fantastic. You, You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, when I found out about uh, the work that you're doing, I said, absolutely, let's bring them on. We will make a space and a place on our airwaves to have you on to really expand upon your story. Jeffrey, this is your dream, founder, president, Tell us about this. Uh, what were you doing prior to the creation of Doors of Change? And what were some of the inspirations for you personally to want to create this beautiful organization? Thank you for having us, Jim. That's a great question. Um, a little over 20 years ago, I had a spinal cord injury uh, in my physical therapy private practice. I practiced for 18 years, had a successful business. And within a second, uh, I had to stop my profession did a lot of soul searching and just kept realizing these youth in our community and our country are going through a lot of problems. You yeah. saw escalation of violence. Santee happened, the shooting. Columbine happened, the shooting. And it's just getting worse and worse. And I kept saying, there's got to be some organizations that can help them make better choices. And yes. so I spent a year, researched, interviewed 100 nonprofits. I went on the outreach program one time on the streets so I can find how they get homeless kids off the streets. And I never knew there were homeless kids, number one. But when I went on that that evening, uh, Jim it literally changed my life. When I saw mm. how they approached the, the youth, how they responded, uh, I just said, I- I've got to do something to help these kids. These kids need so much help. And uh, it's been over 20 years now helping homeless kids get off the streets. So what was the first thing that you were, were able to do? Did you have to sort of round up... Uh, support, investment, people that wanted to roll up their sleeves and be a part of your infectious uh, positivity? Well, you know, being a physical therapist, I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to help. And so I made a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails. And finally, uh, Billy Joel was the first music angel that remembered me through my photos. And he said, I will, um, I'll sign a keyboard for you. I know that what you're doing is the right thing. I like your vision. And so he was the first one that came on board, started signing things for us. And then in three months, Elton John heard about what he was doing because they toured together. And he said, I want to get involved also. So we are so blessed. They have Elton John and Billy Joel in the first three months validating what we're doing, supporting what we're doing. And from then, many, many, many other musicians have come on board. That oh, You've even had Seinfeld, I think, too, gave yep. something. I mean, it's extraordinary. Buddy Guy also did. and The Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones as well. Bruce so they, Springsteen, you know, Carlos Santana, the Eagles, the, the Who. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than these groups. And once they trust you, then they continue to sign for you. Because, yes. again, it's hard for them, just like homeless youth, to trust. Because they've been yeah. taken advantage of by so many people. But thank God we've been blessed and we... We still have a lot of memorabilia for sale. If people want to make a difference and they say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll 
buy something and it's going to feed a kid for a year, yeah. I'll do it. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff on our website, including Billy Joel signed seventh keyboard for us. And uh, Bruce Springsteen signed uh, uh, Born to Run, one of his famous, you know, uh, albums, a whole gold album with his whole, the whole group signed it. So we've got a lot of stuff on the website. People can can make a difference, make a purchase and save kids' lives. So tell us uh, about how difficult this issue is, because, you know, you see, um, I've seen on the internet, I mean, it sort of disturbs me in a way, only because I see people who are uploading videos and what they're doing is they're going into like a city area, a downtown area, and they're just driving through and they're just filming people in the most difficult situations. They're not offering help. They're not, you know, lending support to you guys. They're not, they're just driving through coming out of the suburbs and the SUV pointing a camera at the homeless and people that are really struggling and need help and then uploading it on, you know, to get views on the internet and to generate revenue from that at the expense of these people who are our citizens, our neighbors, they were, they're somebody's son, their, their daughter, the mother, the father, the, they might've been a professor at a university. They might've been a nun. Things happen in life. And almost sort of like taking advantage of, oh, look at them. Look at how mm -hmm. strange they look. And look, they're, you know, uh, putting a needle in their arm or whatever's going on. And I'm a Libra, so I loathe injustice. <laughs> uh, I hate when I see that. It almost feels mm -hmm. like they're being taken advantage of. And so many people in their busy lives just walk past somebody. And mm -hmm. every time I've always, you know, tried to help as much as I can. There was even a situation, and you'll find this ironic, and I'm sure you've seen these things yourself, where it was very, very cold. This is a couple of years ago before the pandemic. It was very, very cold out. And I was in Manhattan and I was walking to Grand Central Station to hop on the train to come north. And I noticed it was, it would have been a phenomenal front cover of a newspaper or maybe on the cover of your website, just the irony of it all. What you had was one of those vestibules at one of the major banks. So here it's a city block, you have the bank and then you have the vestibule, you know, you put your ATM card in it unlocks mm -hmm. the first door. Then you go into the warm vestibule then there's another door to the inside of the lobby of the bank, but that's dark. There's nobody there because it's nighttime and it's locked. But you do have the ATM machine there inside the vestibule. It was a very unusual statement, what I saw. And a lot of people didn't notice it and they walked by. I'm saying, wait, how can you not see this? Look at what this is. And what it was was um, inside that vestibule, rolled up in blankets and whatever they had were uh, probably about 30 homeless people mm -hmm. because they needed the warmth mm -hmm. of even the vestibule in the bank. And I guess, you know, as each person went in maybe to retrieve their dollars out of the ATM or whatever they were doing at the ATM, they would go in behind and, and lay down mm -hmm. or whatever it would be. It was one of the most ironic things I ever saw where here we have a place where all the money is, all the opportunity, the money, security that it provides, covers health care, whatever, right there. And here they are inside the vestibule. And there's this door that would be the door to opportunity, but it's dark, it's closed, it's the inside of the bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yet you have these people in desperate need. Mm -hmm. It's just almost, it was a very unusual thing to see all these people in the, the vestibule. They couldn't access, probably would never be able to get inside the bank because of their situation and how close you have, you know, all this money and, and everything there. And they're like, one degree of separation from it. It was 
it has stuck with me forever to mm. see that um, mm. the uncanny nature of the bank and the homeless right there. And mm. just the one door that separates it all. And yet the other thing was how many people were walking by and didn't make that connection. Mm. Didn't even notice uh, that. Um, I wanted to share that with you guys because I thought it was very, very touching for me to see that uh, because we do go by, in our busy lives, a lot of people that could use a little help. And here you are, you know, creating an organization that does just that, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. It's a profound visual. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say, Jeffrey? I was going to say, it's very important that people realize why these youth are on the streets. You know, most of them are not, do not want to be in the streets. 98% of them do not want to be in the streets. They come from very dysfunctional backgrounds. That's not safe for them to be at home. And so they choose being on the streets versus being with their parents, getting the heck kicked out of them, you know, or, or raped or molested or beaten or all these different things. Their parents are drug addicts. Their parents are alcoholics or 40% nationally are LGBTQ kids. Ours are about 60% of our kids are LGBTQ kids, but these kids do not want to be on the streets. So, right. you know, when you walk over them or spit on them or whatever you're doing, they, they don't want to be homeless. It's not their fault that they're homeless, but once they're on the street, it's very difficult to get off the streets because of trusting. They don't trust anybody. No, not at all. So, and it, it, have you seen it growing since the pandemic a lot more on the streets? It just seems like with many more tent cities in a lot of places we normally didn't see them before. It seems to have just really grown and it's it's really sad to see the situation. Have you both seen that in your daily travels? Or, I mean, you got the stats, I'm sure you see the, sure. the upward swing with it all, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, the pandemic, Jim, has caused, um, I mean, as a nation, we, we've all been suffering, but particularly for homeless, um, what has happened is it's caused more isolation. When the pandemic happened, a lot of the social service agencies um, programs closed due to COVID. So um, they, they, uh, these poor homeless um, young people were more isolated. And when you're more isolated, you tend to have more depression. Um, obviously, the mental illness um, as a nation, again, has been on the rise since the pandemic. And this, of course, hits the demographics that we're serving as well. So there's been a tremendous increase in not only homelessness, but mental illness on the streets, as well as addictions. Um, and it, the big drug out here is fentanyl. I'm sure it's nationwide. So it's, it's, a, it's a hot mess, really, what it is. So it has increased tremendously. Mm. We have a video we want to show that's sort of, uh, it's a beautiful video, sort of in, in a visual way, in a musical way, shows a little bit about uh, your incredible organization and the work you do, breaking the, helping to break the cycle of homelessness. Let's mm -hmm. take a look at that now, and then we'll be back. The thing that made me leave home when I was 12 that was so bad was my new stepfather. He started to abuse me physically, emotionally, mentally, would call me names, drag me by my hair, hit me, kick me. He was basically torturing me. On the streets is quite difficult, near impossible to trust people really because they were always looking out for themselves. I had to do the same, look out for myself. The longest time period I didn't eat for was probably like three days. I was chain smoking cigarettes for warmth. I figured the heat from the smoke, you know, would keep would me warm for the night. Keep you warm for the night. I slept in a lot of crazy places. I would sleep like on private benches, like parks. I slept on the beach a lot. I had a lot of crazy places. I would sleep like on parks. I slept on the beach a lot. I was one night I slept in a dumpster. There was one night I slept in a dumpster. Thankfully, it wasn't trash day. Thankfully, it wasn't trash day. I was able to sleep in front of anybody. I was able to sleep in front of anybody. It was like, hey, they killed me, they killed me. It was like, hey, they killed me. You know, they would try to rob me. They would try to rob me. It's like, that's just what it was. That's just what it was. I would perform in the streets to get some money. Just do tricks on a soccer ball. Tricks on a soccer ball. The toughest thing about being homeless is the loss of hope. The loss of hope. And trying to hold on to that. Trying to hold on to that. When I first heard of Doors and Chains, Jeff was walking around doing outreach. 
We're going on outreach, which we've done now for 18 years, twice a week, trying to find homeless kids between the age primarily of 16 to 25. When we find them, we ask them if they'd like to come to a music and arts program. They get free music lessons, free art, free dinners, free food, free clothes, case management, whatever they would like. We've seen now over 7,300 visits now in six years. The staff of Doors of Change are kind. They're always in a great mood. They're always asking to help anyway. It's really nice. It feels like a family. Doors of Change has helped me because I was homeless at 17 because my biological dad got involved and he punched me in the face uh, repeatedly. And now I'm about to graduate from college, computer engineering. Homeless, degree. <laughs> Pretty, pretty clear line. <laughs> it's really important that people that are able to donate to Doors of Change can provide the financial support that we need to continue to provide opportunities for these kids, whether it be music instruments, referrals, life skills, you know, anything that they need help with. They need a lot of support, and even if it's just five dollars, I mean, really anything can help these kids. And the bigger the donation, the more children are going to end up with opportunities like me that they can make something of themselves and make an impact in this world. And that's why it's so important that we have donors. They really make the whole organization run. Very, very special when you see it, you know, the visual impact of it all. Um, so you've had your work cut out for you and you're doing beautiful work. Um, Merlin's watching, she's asking, how, how do the kids get to be in your care? How does that work as far as their participation and their involvement? Well, what we've been doing um, since COVID, I'll start with that, is we've been um, doing outreach four or five times a week to the San Diego County area, including um, San, downtown San Diego as well as North County. So we've made a tremendous effort to um, be on the streets. That's where the kids are with um, outreach uh, workers and uh, myself and Jeffrey both also do outreach and we take a backpack and load it up with waters and snacks and white socks and we uh, post our flyers everywhere where we think we're, we would expect young people to be, um, including the libraries, laundromats, um, parks, restrooms, and um, with the hope that they'll see the flyers and then call our case manager. And we have had a tremendous response um, to these flyers. There's such a need out there so that even if we don't see the, the young people when we're doing outreach, they call us. And to date, Jeffrey, what are our numbers to date? How we've had how many kids um, call us year to date so far for our services? Well, we, we just let me let you know that the outreach, we've seen over 10,000 youth in outreach. Uh, over the years, um, we, we've housed, uh, we've, we've placed over 2,300 youth in housing, uh, but it has, it always starts with the outreach first. That's the first time we're going to meet them and hopefully God willing, give them something and then say, listen, come to our music and art program or just connect with them because they don't trust you and you have to earn your trust. And so once they trust you, then they ask for help and our case manager will help them. But it takes a while sometimes to gain trust. And that's why our music and art made it so many months sooner than before that. And that's why we've been doing music and art for, for years. But things have changed tremendously with COVID because these kids have spread out. They've undergone underground because they freaked out. Not only are they, are they homeless, but they have a pandemic on top of them. There's no place for them to shelter so, and, and to hide. So they really are, as, as Joanne said before, Mental health is really affected during pandemics for these homeless kids. We've seen record numbers of youth for mental health referrals, double, mm. more than double what we did the year before. And you're really focused on transitional age youth, right? It's 16 to 25. They're the most underserved of the homeless uh, population. I think a lot of people don't realize, realize that. A lot of times I just think that the 
stigma is that a homeless person is an older man or an older woman. They've got a bottle of Manischewitz in their hand and they're rolled in a blanket and that's it. The stereotypical ways that it's been presented. But we're talking about 16 to 25 year olds where they have their life just beginning and starting and so much opportunity and so much hope. And it's the, the train has come off the track for whatever reason. And it can again, happen to any of us at any moment. Um, tell us about that, that particular underserved population. Cause I think it might surprise a lot of the viewers that that's a, a big part of the problem and the age group. Yeah. Well, I think that, Jeffrey was so wise many years ago to to notice to serve this population because it's very um, overlooked. You know, there's a lot of services for vets. There's a lot of services for families. There's a lot of services for um, pregnant women, all of which are important as well. But I think this 17, 16 to 17 to 25 year olds is a, is a missing component. A lot of these kids that come to us are aged out of foster care. Um, and they don't, they didn't, there wasn't a plan for them. So they, they go out to the world <laughs> after being in foster care, um, not being prepared how to, how to acclimate themselves. Uh, a lot of these kids come to us, they, are, they did not graduate high school. Um, they got lost in the system. Shame on us and our public schools in California. They're horrific. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of them have learning disabilities. And then again, as Jeffrey mentioned, they come from such dysfunctional families. So by the time we get them, they're these broken, sort of very, very tired, weary young people, and they've lost hope. So that's how they come to us. So it's a very important demographic to serve. When we went out there and did our research with adult, the, the, the chronic adult um, homeless that we see, 51% of them said they were homeless before the age of 25. Mm. So why wouldn't we as a nation understand how important it is to serve this population, to help break the cycle of homelessness. There should be nothing more important to any of us for, for our children, for, 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 to, for our tomorrow, to make a better today by helping serve these young people. Yeah. Linda is watching, uh, she's actually in Florida. She says, in the services uh, you all provide for all of these people, do you provide education and career training? Sure. Um, Linda, good question. Uh, most of these kids come to us and, and their first needs are immediate being mental health um, concerns and addiction. M many of these kids are addicted to drugs, alcohol, uh, so that the first priority is to, to, to do a, uh, a eval of their mental status. And then certainly once we get them stable, we definitely encourage education. Education is a way to break homelessness. Uh, many of our kids, um, we help support them to go to city college by providing laptops, cell phones, tutoring. Um, so yes, that is so important. And um, honestly, though college isn't for everyone, especially these kids who have a learning disability. So we also work very closely with the California Conservation Corps, CCC, uh, as well as Job Corps, where they can actually be trained um, for a trade, um, whether it be firefighting or culinary school, so um, we, we really try to, to meet them where they're at so that they can, um, that they can succeed. Yeah. And college isn't for everyone. It's very important that the listeners realize that, you know, there's all these causes out there. What are you going to do? What, what do you want to help? If it touches you helping these youth that no one's helped before, especially the, the chance of likelihood of them breaking the cycle of homelessness is greater than any other age group in homelessness. So the reason is they haven't been on the streets that long. So you can get to them, you know, within a year, two years of being on the streets. That's a heck of a lot different than a guy that's been on the street for 10 or 15 or 20 years. Very, very difficult for them to break the cycle. But these young youth that have been, you know, on the streets for six months, three months, a year, whatever. As long as you gain their trust and you get them the resources that they need, including mental health, mm -hmm. they can break the cycle. You teach them, you know, importance of goal setting, which we do in our music and art program. And, and do whatever we can to just befriend them mm -hmm. and so they're safe. They can break the cycle of homelessness. And so, you know, when people say, where is my money best spent? To me, if you want to break the cycle of homelessness of any age, help this age group, the transitional age youth, and yeah. you're going to have the greatest chance of getting them off the streets so that 20 years from now, we're not going to have those people on the streets, you know, like they are now. Right. Exactly. Maureen is, uh, she's actually in Arizona. She's, uh, 
I'm born on 9-11 and I choose to give back each year by selecting an organization to support. May I use Doors of Change this year? Could you please provide info so that I can share it on social media? So that is the starting place to go right to the website and then connect from there. Yes. Maureen, thank you, number one, for wanting to, to make a difference. You know, if people are touched, Jim, and they don't take action, it doesn't help anybody. But if they're touched and they take action, even if it's a $10 donation, a $20 donation, whatever they can do, be multiplied by 1,000 or 2,000 people, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So, yes, go to doorsofchange.org. You can actually watch several interviews with the kids on there. You can see that this is the real deal. Um, you can uh, see the memorabilia. You can make a donation. We have a thing called the Angel Team. The California Angels gave us, we're the only ones they've ever allowed us to take the name Angel Team and the trademark it for our use for homeless kids. And so for $11 a month, you know, you see on the TV, $19 a month, $20 a month. For $11 a month, one one is Angels. So for $11 a month, it's $132 a year. You could be on our Angel Team. And you can get great pride of, of knowing that you're part of the team, making a difference to get these kids off the streets. Anything you can donate is we appreciate. But if you do it monthly on an auto pay, it makes a huge difference for our organization. And it really does make a huge difference to get these kids the services they need, especially during COVID, because we have a lot of kids that are coming to us during COVID. Let's talk more about the services themselves. Uh, so people, our viewers uh, watching, some have asked, now this really covers the, the San Diego, California area. I know some have asked, are there other locations in the United States or elsewhere that doors of change exist? They're, they're almost saying, yeah. oh, gee, we wish, you know, that was in our neighborhood or something along those lines, but it's predominantly the San Diego area, right? Well, that was, that was until COVID. And since COVID, we've been actually helped 13 different States. Anybody from the United States kids can call in and our wonderful case manager, Nicole McDonald will help them. Whatever, you're in Florida, okay? We're in Florida. She'll document whatever area they're in and find them the organization near them that can do the, the needs that they have, whether it's, you know, mental health issues, they need Medi-Cal, they need IDs, they need clothes, whatever. She'll connect them with different, and housing also, by the way. And Joanne, you can continue with that, but it's really, now we're, in, now we're nationally that people can call into us for free and we'll give them the, the help that they need. We did have a question actually from Ann Wozniak. She said, do you provide lodging for the kids? Sure. Um, well, um, first, just to just to finish with Jeffrey's thought there, um, we are pr pr predominantly in the San Diego area. That's where, that's where we can actually meet with the youth. However, because of COVID, we've expanded virtually. So virtually, we can support other um, cities and give them re referrals. But we can't meet with them, obviously, but we can give them referrals. Um, as far as lodging, Ann, we don't have housing ourselves. However, we have um, tremendous partnerships in the San Diego County where we have spent a huge effort in meeting with them to find housing for our TAE, our transitional age youth. And so when a, when a youth needs housing, we know who to call. And we can uh, certainly um, be so uh, in a quick response for them. You know, when you're on the streets, a day makes a difference, an hour makes a difference. So we each day we continue to um, educate ourselves as where the housing is, what shelters are open, you know, where's the LGBTQ shelters, where's the female, you know, shelters for females, shelters for men. To, the more informed we can be, the quicker we can respond to the need of the homeless youth. So we, although we don't have housing ourselves, we have uh, relationships and partnerships with people who provide housing. That is terrific. That, that and is and you, you know, Jim, one more thing that's really exciting. In 2020, we had a record number of kids replaced, which was 83. That's a lot of youth to place yes. in housing. Last year, in 2021, we doubled it. We placed 161 youth in housing because of all the partnerships that Joanne has helped us create that we get these youth in ho safe housing. Um I mentioned that uh, what you do is uh, very, very important, not just special, but important. I've had a relationship with an organization. They're actually uh, based out of New Haven, Connecticut. They're called Columbus House. Mm -hmm. And they find um, they find housing for those who are no longer able to find a place to live. Mm -hmm. They're all usually homeless. Um, 
and they have these wonderful facilities where they feed them and they find housing and clothing for them. And I've been affiliated with them for, I'd say about, I think it's about 13, 14 years now. And, and I help them with some of their fundraisers. They, um, they do this fabulous event called chocolate to the rescue where they bring in all of these incredible pastry chefs mm -hmm. and restaurateurs. And it's usually done at, uh, you know, a hotel or an inn where they can really hold the amount of people and they'll bring, uh, people will buy a ticket, which will be their donation. And then they can come and they can sample all these incredible chocolate creations. And then there's prizes for the best this and the best that, and the people vote, um, and the money that's raised and there's, there's giveaways and all kinds of stuff, but the money that is raised and the turnout is so extraordinary. And I think it's beautiful when there's organizations like yours or like Columbus house, they're teaming up and doing these beautiful things. They too, when the pandemic hit all of a sudden, you know, donations drop and, but yet the demand is increased and everybody, you know, sort of pulled in the reins because of everything going on. And, uh, it's just a beautiful thing when you have an opportunity to bring people together like that if for such a, an important reason. And when you get a chance to talk to, which I have, and I've emceed their events for them, you know, lending what I can do as a master mm -hmm. of ceremonies and a host, which I love doing, um, just to see, you know, not only the response from those who have been helped, but also the caring people that work with organizations like yours who truly are there be, not to become famous. They're there because they have a little extra in their heart in the empathy category where they really, really care about people and they want to express it in some way. So they'll give their time to doors of change, uh, which is a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. We have a great staff, a caring staff, a caring volunteer group that the, the youth really, they feel it. They see it. You know, if you're just going there and you're kind of faking it, they will see right through you. But Joanne creates such a wonderful um, love, you know, feeling of, of people being safe yes. and not judged. And the, when a youth can come into a situation where it's safe for them and they're not judged and they feel like they feel love around them. That's why we've grown. That's why we saw 8,300 visits in our one program. That's a lot of youth coming in because they want to come in, not because they have to come in. Right. Exactly. Yes. And uh, and that's what you that's what you see, uh, Joanne. Huh? It's uh, it, it's quite special when you have these people who want to come in. And now are they uh, are there staff people? And then do you have a team of volunteers that roll mm -hmm. up their sleeves and mm -hmm. and help facilitate all of this as well? We do. And as Jeffrey mentioned, I'm, I'm really very um, particular about who steps in that room because these youth are, are just it's very, very dear to me. And and we have a lot of responsibilities to make this setting as, as, as safe and trusting as we can. So we handpick the volunteers. Um, we don't welcome people who just need to take it for a course. You know, in college, they have to get some credit. So they need to do a homeless project. These are committed volunteers that um, have true passion for the homelessness. They're not judgmental. Um, and they stay with us for years. We've had some of the same volunteers for years. Our music instructors have been with us from the beginning of time. So that consistency and commitment, kids know that. So it's a, it's a process that we're I'm very, very particular about who is in, you know, who joins us. Um, and honestly, it, it works so well because we don't have many, but we have few in, that can do so much rather than having a lot that don't do much. And um, a lot of them are women because we all know that women get things done. <laughs> so we have that. But we do, you know, Jeffrey mentioned love. And, you know, of course, you mentioned that in the beginning of your show with Lovity. Yes. And, you know, we have so much love in that room. Um, honestly, that's probably what I'm most proud about is that we love these young people uh, without judgment, um, without any preconceived notions or expectations or demands or and they they need love. And yeah. that room is filled with love. That's so beautiful. We had a question that uh, came in from Merlin. Uh, do the courts send kids to you? Do mm. some of them come out of the court system? 
That's a great question, excellent question. We we have just recently, this last year uh, during the, the pandemic, the COVID, we were able to um, align ourselves with the public defenders in San Diego. And it's been a tremendous program where what happens is young people are incarcerated, oftentimes for you know a very minor drug charge. Um, and they come out and they don't they don't have their mom or dad who meets them on the outside with their new clothing and their car to go get a job and all those things that other people have. They come out and they're back on the streets. Mm. Now, how, you know, you know what's going to happen then. They're going to end up back in there. So we will meet with them upon their um, release and we will come up with a plan for them. We'll have their IDs. We'll have their um, you know, shelter for them, an apartment for them, um, a program for them. And it's it's a wonderful way to avoid them going back in and being incarcerated and they love when we meet them out there i love doing that i love bringing them new shoes oh absolutely you know what i like too is you know one of the things that i think a lot of people you know not people necessarily that are homeless just anybody we've all been craving the arts and music and mm -hmm. so much, especially during the pandemic, because so many things were shut down and canceled sure. and closed. Yep. So if we weren't baking bread or watching, you know, reruns of Dick Van Dyke and all the nostalgic okay. stuff that made us feel good and the nostalgic movies, we were missing, you know, we were, we were putting a lot of music on and we were missing the arts, which sure. also, you know, have needed funding as well to get back on its feet. And here you've combined music and the arts, which yes. are very healing and universal languages in so many different ways. Um, let's expand on that a little bit and, and, and some of the ways that you do that, because as you say, music and art instruction actually builds trust months sooner yes. than typical outreach. Tell us about that. Yes. That's amazing. Sure. Thanks again for bringing that up, Jim. Um, number one, we saw initially 20 years ago, it would take six or nine months to develop trust with homeless kids. That was too long because you lose them by then. They die, die of you know, drug overdose, uh, gang violence, suicide, or they just leave and you can't see them. So right. we decided, listen, you've got to do something to make it so that these kids trust us sooner. They're going to get the resource they need. So, um, we, uh, we started our music in our program. I brought a blues group into the shelter and the kids went crazy. And we said, you know, the next day I started the music in our program. We said, this is, they love this. They went crazy about it. So um, we, you know, teach them eight instruments. We offer them viol violin, ukulele, mandolin, harmonica, keyboards, drums, keyboards, etc. They get to pick whatever they want and they can cho change every time. But just by learning one or two chords on the guitar or the violin you know it's amazing how that alone can help a kid's self-esteem because they they feel in the dumps they feel they're a piece of garbage like they've been told their parents you're not you're worth nothing you know they throw them on the streets so by just doing something and mastering something for the first time it's amazing to see them come around they sit up better they start smiling more they start talking to more people you know it's just it, it you really see it them unfold and we also give them a, a goal because just by teaching them is great, but if they can earn something, that's a whole different, different level. So if they come for six classes, they can earn an instrument of their choice or $50 in art supplies. So far, 453 youth have earned instruments and they get to take it. When we give it to them, they actually cry to Joanne and I, because they think we're not going to come through with our word. We yeah. come through with our word and give them the violin and they say, this is mine. You've earned this. And so we kind of teach them goal setting. It's the first time they've done goal setting probably. And let me tell you, I took violin as a kid. And if they can master that, they are amazing because it's not so easy. <laughs> Question uh, that makes me think, as you're mentioning all these fabulous instruments, um, you know, when you learn an instrument uh, or they say, even if you play a sport as well, you, it can really help just in your overall development, you know, as you go along, because there's that tenacity, there's that thirst for it. There's the, the focus, the clarity of the practicing and getting better and, and the goal orientation as well. But do you ever have where, um, where they sort of master that instrument and they get really good? Do you ever do any concerts where they come back 
all of mm -hmm. them or some of them, and they put on a show and they show you and, or, or people that come to watch what they've learned from the musical uh, education. I'll just tell you that for several years, we've had, a, a, we call it the TNT band. Uh, we're actually at one of our galas, then the kids will perform at the gala with the instructors, and they did it for many years. Um, That's great. And, and that really worked out well. Now we actually have bigger concerts. So like Los Lobos was two years ago with 1,500 people. Uh, we're doing Three Dog Night will be 1,700 people. And we always have, instead of the kid perform, they'll speak at the concert. They'll speak in front of people and share with them their their life story, which mm -hmm. really touches people. And uh, so if anybody's in Southern California or wants to take a trip here for because it's so beautiful, San Diego, June 30th, a Thursday night, outside because of COVID, we're going to have 1,700 people, three dog night. It's going to be phenomenal. They, they have over 20 songs in the top 40. In the 70s, they were huge. And they have a lot of big, you know, that even oh, younger yeah. people don't know who they are. They know their songs. You know, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Oh, yes. I know that song. You the know? world so, is black. The yeah. world is white. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's a great, great concert, huh? Event. So that's coming up again at the Moonlight uh, Amphitheater in Vista, yes, California. Yes, Northern California, the Northern San Diego. And they can go to Doors of Change and buy tickets there uh, for the concert. If they're, if they're going to come to San Diego, whether it's just for the weekend or make a week out of it or whatever, it's, it's a beautiful city. It's a great cause. Oh, and is. I guarantee you the person that's going to be speaking is going to blow their minds. Um, mm. Her name is N Nikki Johnson Hudson. And J Nikki uh, was homeless from 12 to 16, African-American woman. She then put herself through school. She then put herself through law school. She then had her own law firm. And last year she was Ms. Universe winner. That is incredible. You know, you talk about these success stories. There's more of them on the screen right there, huh? Yeah. It's it's extraordinary. Um, what it is, is, you know, sometimes um, you just need that leg up. You just need the clarity, the direction, the focus. You need the attention. You need to be heard, respected, appreciated. Mm -hmm. 90% of the homeless youth come from very dysfunctional homes, right? Where they're not necessarily attended to. They're, they're not getting the love, the support. The, they're mis, there's a lot of misguiding that's happening. And maybe their parents aren't there or the parents themselves mm -hmm. have a lot of issues or it's yeah. a single parent household, whatever it may be. Um, that that's a big number, 90%. And, you know, these are crucial years again, where they're developing their identity and who they are. Peer pressure is big. I mean, we, we all remember what it was like to be between 16 and 25. I mean, for the three of us, that was only about what, six, seven years ago, <laughs> years ago maybe, <laughs> but we got through it. But think about what it would be like to try to manage and, you know, that uh, river, uh, and s try to sail through that river being homeless. So um, being heard, respected, appreciated, understood, and, and guiding, having some guidance, uh, yeah. mentorship is very important, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. I think that I just wanted to comment because there was a question about these, um, what, other, what happens with these musicians that earn our instruments. Oftentimes they come back and they volunteer for the program. And they do join bands. We have a couple of our um, young people who join local bands and are out there now making some money, doing some gigs. Um, but they do they do support us um, because they know how wonderful the program was for them. So I love when they come back and want to and want to teach and volunteer. And I even love more when they can't come back because they have jobs, <laughs> so they, they don't have the time to volunteer. Um, but you are right, Jim. The the these young people are not supported. Um, a lot of them are single families. A lot of them come from addicted parents, um, so they just don't have all the advantages that um, that most of us um, are able to provide our own children. And even with that, how many people have problems when they have all the advantages? Because it's right. just a very difficult age, and it's a difficult difficult world. Yeah. So um, we we love what we do, and we we do it with um, you know full love and full heart. And um, I think that that is we're just Jeffrey is is just the, the best leader here because he leads through his heart and 
you know, he attracts all of us that, that are on the same page and, and support that passion. Do you almost feel like uh, Merlin had asked, do you f almost feel like proud parents when no. they succeed? It must feel like they're almost like family in a way, especially if you've been working with them for a while and there's yeah. this relationship and you're rooting for them. I would imagine, you know, it's, you, you can get close to, yes. they can get close to you. You get close to them. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see um, this guy? Is, his name is Tyler. Have your set kid. When I met him, he was 16 years old and his, his, he, he was on the streets because his mom was a meth addict and she loved him, but she, she, she was a meth addict. She lost all the money. And so, you know, when I met him at the shelter, he came in, he took our music class and it literally changed his life. He did not let that guitar out of his hands for two months. And um, he came up to me and said, I want to learn to be a security guard. Will you pay for it? It costs $400. And, you know, that was a lot of money. But because this kid was a leader, he was a giver, he helped other youth. I said, you know something? We'll do that for him. And the ripple effect of that is that he was actually honored at Petco Park right here for Employee of the Year where the Padres play in front of 25,000 people. And just to see him evolve, it's just unbelievable. And it just shows you that when you make a donation to us, it really does help make a difference and save these kids' lives so they can have a better life and be role models, examples of what's possible. But when you see Tyler from living under the Imperial Beach Pier to this. Yeah, that's it's amazing. And he, there he is as one of the success stories as well. Mm -hmm. That's... Um, do you ever hear from, you know, once they go through this, these programs and they succeed and they flourish, does their family or do relatives ever come back maybe into the equation, uh, maybe where they lost touch with them or they just went off in a different distant, uh, different location. And now uh, they're so excited and they're happy and they're rooting them on to, did the, does the family come into play at all once this is happening? That's a good question, Jim. I think for probably um, mostly they don't because mostly that the reason why they're homeless is that they, they, they're leaving their families for, for very various reasons. However, you know, it's not, it's not, not always just the immediate family. What we do encourage is if there's um, someone they know, um, an aunt, an uncle, a relative, that um, it is a safe place and it could be supportive. They, we would we work very closely with Travelers Aid. And what most people don't know that any young person under the age of 25 can have one time um, a full Travelers Aid bus pass um, anywhere in the United States, from from you know California to Connecticut. So we support them um, and qualify and make sure that on that end is a safe place that they, that they can uh, receive support and and have good um, good housing. And that, that is a tremendous um, plus for these young people because obviously being with family is something that we would encourage if the family's healthy and supportive. So we work with Traveler's Aid quite often and, that, and that is a, that's a good way. I tell you who's out there really making a difference are the grandmothers. God bless grandmothers and grandpas. They are the ones that really step up for these kids. Mm -hmm. And Isn't um, that incredible? Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome that that happens. So, you know, shout out to grandmas and grandpas out there. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree. It, it, it's, you, you know, when you have people who are, again, are rolling up their sleeves and they want to be a part of something that they truly believe in like this, uh, it's beautiful. And again, you've had, you know, celebrities and, and lots of people who have wanted to participate. They've, they've wanted to do what they can as well, donating various things and all that's a very special thing to have that connection in that way, huh? It, it is. B.B. King, uh, of anybody, was probably our biggest supporter. And he would meet with me twice a year for about 10 years. And two of those times, he had a, he had a, um, uh, a fever. I said, B.B., you're 81 years old. You should be sleeping right now. Instead of signing this stuff, he says, Jeffrey, I want to help the kids. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, can we honor you? And he gave me permission. And we honored him at San Diego State open air theater with 4,000 people and six national headliners. It was an unbelievable concert, Jim, that, you know, 
uh, the, all these groups came to honor him as well as help with what we're doing with the homeless kids. I mean, we're talking Taj Mahal, Blind Boys of Alabama, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, George Thorogood. I mean, there are some big names that come and honor BB. But BB, we raised 165000 with his help of his Lucille guitars to help homeless kids get off the streets. And we're very blessed to have BB as just one of the many uh, people. And, and I, I have to also thank uh, Billy Joel. Because he was the first one in your area in the in the in in, in Long Island, yeah. he was the one that really came on board first, and he gave the credibility for everybody else. And we've been able to raise over almost nine hundred thousand dollars in memorabilia sales over twenty years, strictly to get kids off the streets and to to you know for our, our program and our supplies that we need in the program to get kids off the streets. That's so incredible, and I'm looking, uh, you know. Diana Crawl and Elvis Costello signed Yamaha keyboard. Google uh, the Google Dolls signed heavy guitar. I mean, <laughs> these are Graham Nash signed road guitar. Sold. That's really amazing. These are some of the ones. Buddy Guy signed the Fender Squire guitar. I mean, there's Billy Crystal signed autobiography. Yeah. I mean, really fantastic. Three-time Grammy winners. You said Taj Mahal and Los Lobos signed Fender Squire guitar. Look at that. Billy Joel signed Rolling Keyboard. Uh, that went for 18000 That's a big help. Chris Isaac signed guitar, uh, Rules of Rock. We're looking at that. This is the website. He's an amazing folks. artist. Look at Chris. Uh, Chris uh, uh, Isaac is an amazing artist, and he's... He did artwork on these two guitars we have for sale. If someone buys it before our event, buy it. If not, it's going to the, the live auction at the event. Jerry Seinfeld as well, yeah. signed photos. Um, yeah, Jewel signed guitar from Jewel. And again, this is just a few, just to show everybody. Boss Skaggs, too, a signed have your own guitar as well. That, that's amazing. But, you know, some Fender. people, Jim, say I don't have the money to spend Four five grand or two grand. Right. I have 20 bucks. We love it. Anything you can donate, it truly does make a difference because hopefully we're going to touch many people's hearts and they're going to give 10 bucks, 20 bucks, $100, whatever they can give. It all is wonderful. The angel team, though, we love that $11 a month or more. That, that Then you really are an angel. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And the dog barking in the background agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so just look at, yeah, some of what we're seeing here. A couple of uh, nice comments. Uh, Terry Ann says, uh, we'll check out your website. Also says, I'm so thankful for Doors of Change. These children are precious. And thank you for all you do, Jeffrey and Joanne. And God bless you. Mm -hmm. And Maureen is saying, um, okay, hearing these success stories of those whose lives you have changed, it's making my eyes leak. Linda Odell says, Joanna and Jeffrey, thank you for everything you do for the homeless. It is truly amazing. Um, <sighs> Merlin cuts to the chase. How do you handle spoiled brats who just don't want to listen to their parents and leave home? <laughs> well, you know, and sometimes that happens as well if they don't eat all the vegetables. I mean, um, I guess a different way of looking at that would be, do you ever have a situation where maybe they are directed to you guys maybe by a, a concerned person or what have you uh and they're resistant or or they thought that they wanted to be a part and to to gather all mm -hmm. of this uh, wit and wisdom but then they they're resistant to it or they give in or give up or and and they just try to go in another direction um tell us a little bit about some of that and how you work with them on that I think, I think it's a fair question. I think that, um, you know, for all of us, our expectations when these young people join us is merely that we want to provide for them a better day than they had yesterday. And that when they're in the program, they need to abide by our rules and be kind to those around them. Short of that, they don't need to take a music lesson. They don't need to take an art lesson, but they, they need to behave, you know, accordingly. And honestly, I think that and all the years that Jeffrey's been doing this and in the five years I've been part of things, we have honestly, we, these are some of the most polite kids. I mean, it puts, it puts mainstream kids to shame. I've never heard more thank yous, you know, um, appreciate the hugs. So I think that, um, you know, people have an expectation about how they behave. Um, 
they're very respectful. And I think it's because we set the tone that we trust them. And I think sometimes when you trust people more, they're more trustworthy. And um, we have had few incidents of any in all the years when, when you think about having as many as 40 homeless youth all in one room together without incident. Try having 40 young people all in one room together without incident. So I think- You can't um, have a kid's birthday party without an incident. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I think we set the tone um, and also there's rules and they know that it's a privilege to be there. And if they don't abide by the rules, they'll be asked to leave. So um, there are some people, I think more to your question that um, aren't um, ready to be off the streets. And that's not why they came to the program. So what we do is we teach them how to be safe on the streets. You know, make sure who you hang out with. Um, you know, try to 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 stay in this this area versus this area. If you're young, don't hang out with ho older homeless. Uh, safe parking we try to find for them. So I think again, it's it's the whole thing. You have to meet them where they're at, mm -hmm. and we do that willingly without judgment. And I think they accept. They they don't feel judged, so they they're more willing to to trust us as they take those few steps forward. Yeah. And, and we try not to have expectations, Jim. It's hard not to, but we try not to have expectations because we don't know what's going on in their mind. We don't know what, what their history is, whatever, but we present them with a safe place where it's non-judgmental. We would love for them to succeed, but again, it's up to them. They're going to have to want to help themselves, but we present ourselves to a place where they will trust us quickly our case manager will get them all the resources they need. And, uh, and then it just takes time. It's they have, and I tell them it takes hard work. It's not easy. It takes hard work to succeed, but you can do it. Exactly. Right. Yes. And, and hearing that and that reinforcement, whether somebody's homeless or not, just mm -hmm. getting that kind of reinforcement is something we all need. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you're providing that, uh, and it's a beautiful thing because they will absorb that and they'll be there's I'm sure they're so excited, you know, as they sort of graduate from these programs and, and re-enter back into everyday life that they want to now help somebody else. They want to pay it right. forward, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. We have many play it forward. And to me, one of the most exciting times that they have is when they win when they earn an instrument or art. That's where they're the most excited because they actually accomplish something that they can actually. And then when we follow through, you're going to actually give this to me. Yes, I said I was going to. Well, other people didn't give it to me when they said they were going to. And when we do, it really blows their mind. So that that little and it's again, it just shows them about goal setting and about uh, being a person of your word. When we say we're going to do something, we do it. Absolutely. Uh, since 2001, Doors of Change has been transforming the lives of homeless youth. One young person at a time raised over $4.7 million. And for more than 20 years, you've helped place over 2,200 homeless youth in safe housing and off the streets. That's incredible. That's One at a time. Thank God for Joanne and for our wonderful staff and for our wonderful volunteers because um, it takes a, a, an army, a village, a team to be able to do what we do. We can't do it. One person is that it's impossible. So thank God for Joanne's leadership and for all of our staff and our volunteers, because, um, we have, we have the secret sauce. We know what it works. We just want to help more kids. Why do you love this, uh, Jeffrey? Obviously, you know, you speak so fluently on it, but what is it? about it. Uh, it's obviously a great blessing and joy to you. You would never have uh, created an organization like this if you didn't have a caring heart, if you weren't somebody that uh, has the emotional intelligence, the empathy quotient is quite high to just you saw something in front of you and said, okay, enough is enough. We've got to help. We've got to come up with something. And out of that is the creation of Doors of Change, which is a fantastic name. Why does it continue to bring you such great blessing in your life, having facilitated this from the beginning, creating it, and seeing it blossom in the way that it has? It's the youth. When I see them coming from the streets, and then when I see them graduate from college, and now law school is from here, from 17, 16 here, on the streets, 
to hear two semesters left of law school. Okay, that's why I do it. Because I see that it is making a difference for these youth. It's giving them a life that they deserve with hard work. And uh, we're saving lives. And, um, you know, I, I think that uh, I know that I was chosen uh, to do this. And I know that Joanne feels the same thing. And uh, we just, it's not about us. It's about helping, helping these kids that need help. Joanne, same thing for you. Uh, the blessings that it brings you as well. Well, I, you know, I, I'm blessed to have two grown adult children and, and um, I just always had our home open to young people. I've always had a, a, a place in my heart for young people. And I've just realized over the years how when you invest um, time and love and support into these young people during those very, very important age, um, you know, this the 16 to 25, what a difference it can make for their whole lives. And to me, um, I just, it just brings me such tremendous joy, how appreciative they are when you just give them a hug. <laughs> um, and, and, and to me, I mean, that's something that's easy for me. I'm Italian. So we hug, we hug and we say hello, we hug, hug goodbye, we hug in between. So, so it's just, it's just a, a very natural thing for me to do. I, I, I'm so blessed that I've met with Jeffrey and, and part of this organization. Um, so I, I feel very, very blessed to be able to do this in this time in my life. That is really beautifully said. I would imagine Sunday sauce at your house must be delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lots of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're always looking, uh, obviously, for um, support, and it's you know, never not needed. And it could be, like you say, $20 to, uh, you know, whatever somebody can kindly give. Yeah. If that's the website to go to, if they would like to uh, contribute, and obviously they don't have to live in the San Diego area because you never know, you know, the person that you're helping may end up being a president or, you know, you never know. Yeah. So be a change maker. Is important. Be a change, a change maker. maker. If you, if you are touched, take action, do something as little as give 20 bucks or $10, whatever, whatever, do something to help. If you like our organization, do something to help doors of change so we can help, you know, other youth, especially now during the COVID, which there's so many youth that have this, you know, they need, they, they need help right now. They're, they're crying out for help. We, we had 110% increase in uh, mental health referrals last year. Yes. They are crying out for help. We need to help more kids. And I just hope that you're touched by what we're doing and that you take action. And I really appreciate all your, your support so we can get more kids, uh, have them, get them a better life with hard work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any final words you'd like to offer to our viewing audience that's watching live right now globally and will also be watching this later archived on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Joanne? Well, I would like to, to say something in closing, Jim, that even though we're based in San Diego, I would say probably 90% of the kids that we meet on the streets are not from San Diego. They're not natives. They're right. from the Midwest. They're from New Jersey. <laughs> They're from uh, Florida, uh, Arizona. So, so the idea of that it's San Diego's problem or California's problem is not the case because those kids are coming from all over and they're going back to all over. So why wouldn't we want to support this, this cause, this organization to, to help the entire, the entire um, country? So um, also just thank you for spending time on um, – Monday night <laughs> on a Monday, Monday night. I know all well, the days with the pandemic, all the days just have rolled together. I, know, rolled I, together, I don't know about but... you, but I keep uh, advancing the week. Like when it's Thursday, I keep thinking it's Friday, Wednesday, I keep thinking it's Thursday. Ever since it all started, I think I just want to get us sort of through it. I, did the same so thing. I... I thought it was Tuesday night, but, um, but, but thank you for, for having this time and, and your audience and your great questions and your, your audience seems very passionate and, um, again, thank They're, you for they helping are us. They are lovities. They are lovities, right? Well, we love that word. Um, lovities, so Thank yeah. you so much. Mary Bishop in Florida says, such a wonderful organization. God bless you both as well. Thank you, Mary. And Allison thank you. says, way to go. And Terry Ann's checking out the website, which is really nice. Uh, somebody else that was here that always comes in towards the latter part that just wants to say that you two knocked it out of the park. 
Mr. George Burns is with us this evening. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. That's it. You've got God on, on your there side. You Remember when he played do. God? We need God. <laughs> we sure do. That's it. So doorsofchange.org. Uh, and again, if folks want to learn more about that incredible three dog night concert that's coming up in June in Vista, California to help the incredible work of Doors of Change, they can go to doorsofchange.org to find out about tickets and everything else, right? Yes. Thank you so much. And again, if you even uh, the you want to come, the lawn seats start at $49. So anybody can afford to come to our concert to you know, support this cause and to hear uh, Nikki speak is going to blow people's minds. Maureen says this has been a very eye-opening conversation. Thank you for making us aware of your amazing work. You are truly touching our future generations. Merlin is watching and says, wow, it sounds like an awesome program. Kudos to you. Nikki watching, uh, I am thankful for you folks and your wonderful movement for the kids. Bless you both and all folks in the organization. Thank you, Nikki, for that as well. I uh, hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with uh, the both of you and continued <clears throat> blessing and joy in your life and uh, continue on that important legacy building work that you're both so immersed in, really. An honor to have you both on the show, and we will spread the word about our show for everybody uh, to join us, and uh, we'll keep the porch light on for you. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you, Thank Jim. You, Jim. You are very, very welcome. Thank you too. It. You take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, and thanks for starting this organization. It really is absolutely beautiful work you're thank doing. You, you take honor. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Incredible, right? To have both here on the show. We're talking about the special guest, founder and president, Jeffrey Sitkov, and program director, Joanne Newgard. Here is that website one more time, gang. It's doorsofchange.org. And, uh, you know, you learn something new all the time on the Gym Master Show Live. Here's an organization that's giving back and helping, you know, as much as we have entertainment and, and everything else we do on the show, our door is always open to celebrate life and people and helping those who need help and uh, as much as we can. Um, just another example of Lovity and what we do here on the Gym Master Show Live. If you missed any of this, well, you can see it all in the archive right here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Gang, if you missed the episode that we had yesterday, celebrating, speaking of youth and childhood, and all, we had an incredible interactive episode with our audience last night. Viewers sent in their childhood photos and we showed them on the air. You even saw mine and it was a hoot. Everybody was trying to guess at which viewer's photo that was when they were a kid. And if you didn't see that episode, check it out. It's in our YouTube channel. And earlier yesterday as well, uh, we had Nick Endicott Gibb who is the son of the Bee Gees, Mar Morris Gibb. And it was an amazing story. Uh, and he was with us as well. Check that out. And, uh, and of course, we thank both Jeffrey and uh, Joanne for joining us here at Doors of Change, solving youth homelessness by taking music and art to the streets, transforming the lives of homeless youth. Really great organization, right? Good way to kick off a week, isn't it? something positive like that and something beautiful. There's the information again for the concert right there. <laughs> concert of hope benefiting homeless youth. That's a beautiful thing. Three dog night is going to be there. They're legendary. You know, a lot of their songs, right? You still hear them on the radio. And uh, here's that website again, doorsofchange.org. Uh, for tickets or, or just if you want to give. Let's check out some of our lovely comments. And uh, would you believe I haven't eaten a thing today? I haven't had breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it's 8.17 in the evening. It's been that kind of busy, busy, busy day. So we're going to eat. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> Starving. Uh, it was a fun show. Kids were so cute. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Jim, for another amazing show. Jill, good to see you as well, my friend Jill, and continue to spread the word about the Gym Master Show Live. You're definitely a lovety. We love when you're here with us as well. 
Linda says, Jim, I do hope you have Joanne and Jeffrey back on your show. They are a blessing. I so enjoyed this episode. Well, we love when you're here and we so enjoy when we see you pop up on the screen as well. James Masters, you must eat. What's for dinner? <laughs> Uh-oh, I better sit up straight. She's saying James. Uh, let's see. We've got a nice, huge Caesar salad, which we're going to have. And um, we have a, uh, we've got a cheeseburger <laughs> with pickles and, and lettuce and light mayonnaise and ketchup on it. Yes. Uh, so it's a nice balance, right? You've got the, the cheeseburger and it's, it's a lean, it's lean uh, meat. So it should be good with a big Caesar salad that's been sitting there waiting for me. Uh, so thank you very much, Maureen, for looking. Yes, she is. She knows because she's, uh, you know, been in the healthcare industry. She knows you have to eat. You must eat. Your mood can change quickly if you don't. <laughs> Has anybody noticed that? Uh, that your mood changes if you don't eat? How about you, Merlin? Merlin, do you get uh, grumpy? <laughs> Merlin, do you get grumpy if you don't eat? Uh, I wonder that. Or any of you, do you get grumpy, edgy? What do they call that? Hangry if you don't eat? Uh, yes, you got to eat. You got to eat. A couple more comments we'll check in with our live interactive uh, viewing audience from around the world. And um, Joan popping in. She'll check it in the archive. So important a show. Thanks for bringing this to everyone's attention. You are very welcome, Joan. Always a pleasure to have you here and everybody that's watching us live from around the world and those who will be watching us later on in the archives. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the channel you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. Click the notification bell so you never miss any of our incredible episodes. Yeah, and then give this episode a like. If you really enjoyed it, little thumbs up icon right there on our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to support the show, there's a little heart icon on this episode. You can see it right now on our YouTube channel. You click that, it... Uh, allows us to continue to do what we do here at the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. You can support us uh, however you like as well. We appreciate that. Many of you have done that. Uh, click that little heart icon. It's called Super Thanks. You know how when the show is live you, in chat, you can do super chat, super emojis, super stickers. Well, they also have now on our YouTube channel under every episode, a little heart icon. And you click that and that's called Super Thanks. And in order to do that, you don't, it doesn't have to be live. The show doesn't have to be on live. You can do it 24 seven. That little heart icon is always there underneath every episode. It's called super thanks. And that's a beautiful thing. And we appreciate those of you who have done that. It helps us, uh, you know, replace the light bulbs whenever we need them. And these, these are very expensive light bulbs. <laughs> They're big too. Uh, <laughs> And uh, let's see. Um, this was very interesting. Thank you, Jim. Hope everyone has a wonderful week. You as well. Amazing guests all week long coming up for you again tomorrow. Uh, another amazing guest. We'll be posting about that real soon. Thank you, Merlin. And everybody, you guys are the best. We have such a wonderful audience of uh, levity and uh, great viewers. Don't forget, you can binge watch over 600 episodes plus and counting right here on our YouTube channel. Great guests who've come in, all kinds of amazing guests who've passed through, people you grew up with, people you know, people you've admired, people from all walks of life, mm -hmm. talented people, people giving back, Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, comedy, sports, culinary arts, food, you name it, including the gang from Doors of Change. We thank them. And we thank all of you for being with us. You guys are absolutely fantastic. We're going to duck out. Time to eat. Thanks for being with us on this episode of the Gym Masters Show Live. A very inspiring and empowering episode, I think. Really, really nice. We need more of uh, this way of thinking in our society around the world, right? Because the homelessness crisis is rampant. It's huge. And it really does affect all of us in our own different way. So, um, you know, if you're somebody like me who likes to help and support in different ways, the causes that you believe in, 
I've done a lot of work also with the American Cancer Society. Over the years, I've hosted their public affairs television series, um, which that's been a blessing, uh, especially when you interview kids that are coming in uh, who have like stomach cancer and maybe they're 12 years old. That'll really uh, sort of settle your world, right? If you're ever having a bad day, because your washing machine broke down or you got a flat tire or, you know, the things that happen in life. If you ever have a bad day, think about what other people are probably going through. Um, people that are in hospitals, you know, somebody that just lost a loved one 10 minutes ago, somebody that's been in a serious accident or is, is gravely ill or something else happened in their life. Um, you know, that's the great leveler, you know, when somebody, when you're complaining about something and then you see somebody else's plight and you're like, you know, what am I complaining about? All right. So the toaster burnt the toast this morning. That's not the end of the the world. At least you can have the toast. Uh, some people, parts of the world, they don't even have the toaster and they don't have the bread to toast. So I know sometimes we all get up tight over the slightest little things and we make them bigger than they are. Uh, just think about other things that are happening. And you know, when it comes to homelessness, it can happen to anybody. Some of the people that are, you know, in that realm right now, some are, were very educated people. Some, there was a, a divorce and illness, you know, uh, some is escaping violence in their home. Just so many different, um, reasons why the situation is what it is. So whatever, you know, you can do and whatever any of us can do individually and collectively, it's a beautiful thing. That's my story and I'm sticking to it, gang. <laughs> all right. Uh, Nikki says, uh, thank you for the show, Jim. Bon appetit. Blessings and hugs to all right back at you, right back at you. Maureen says, have a wonderful rest of your day and night, everyone. Remember to count your blessings each and every day. My Lovety family is surely one of mine. Thank you, Sir James of Lovety Hall. That's right. I was dubbed that um, when Thomas was on the show, the British royal family commentator, right? If you guys didn't see that episode. It's a cool one live from London, England. Thomas was with us and uh, he's with the British uh, Monarchist Society and very close to uh, the royal family. That was a great episode. Really good. A nice big Caesar salad with a cheeseburger. So you're getting the protein, getting the veggies, you know, all the good stuff. Gang, we love you all. Thanks for being with us here on the show. It's always a pleasure. This is your host, Jim Masters. Thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, our show is a little bit later because I'm on a television shoot in Boston. So our guest, we're going to be announcing soon. We're going to post who the guest is. It's going to be really good. But our show, uh, for those that are watching live, tomorrow the show, instead of being on 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, because I'm going to be coming back from a television shoot in Boston, uh, it's running a little bit later. Uh, the show is going to be tomorrow's edition of the Gym Master Show Live will be at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Those of you in other parts of the world, you'll just have to calculate your time period. Uh, but 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific is the showtime tomorrow live. For those of you that like to participate and be with us live and watch it live and feel the energy of live. Otherwise, of course, all of our shows are saved and archived on the YouTube channel. So if you ever miss anything or you join us late, you can always see the full episodes, all 600 plus right here on our YouTube channel. So uh, tomorrow's show again will be at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, those who are following along live. Again, because I'm coming back from a big TV shoot that's in Boston tomorrow. Jane says, thanks for being here. You're doing a great job. Thanks, Jim. Thank you as well. And of course, uh, they are doing a great job. You're talking uh, Jeffrey and Joanne. Beautiful work. Good stuff. Thanks, gang. We love you all. And uh, we appreciate it. Our viewers come from all around the world, all different ages, uh, backgrounds, income levels, religious views, no religious views, political views, no political views, genders, height, 
weight, eye color, none of it matters. You are all welcome to join us here at the Gym Masters Show. Home to lovity and lots of surprises. We always have a good time here, gang, don't we? All the time. Archive, archive, archive. Thank God I created those archives. Sounds delicious, the Caesar salad and the cheeseburger, huh? Jane needs to go to bed. <laughs> Jane will not go to bed until I wrap up the episode. She will not go to bed. She's here all the time. She never misses it. Uh, she takes, I think, a nap in the daytime because she's in Sweden where it's already considerably later, but she likes to be here when the show is live. So you you get some rest as well, lovely Jane. All right, gang, we'll see you soon, okay? We don't say goodbye here. We say see you later. So we say moi loop. We say slancha. We say cheers. We say sayonara, shalom, avida zain, and all the rest. Good to have you with us on this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Take care. Be well. Be good to one another, love one another, and we'll see you on the next episode, okay? This was a good one. They all are because you're here. Now, I'm going to sit here and I'll wait. I'll be back in not 24 hours, 25 hours for those watching live. <laughs> and uh, I'll be right here in this chair waiting for you. I'll be on the shoot in Boston. Then I'll do that Clark Kent into Superman change that I do. And then I'll plop myself in this host chair and I'll be here waiting for all of you. And I always look forward to it. Take care, gang. You be well. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.